Holy shit, this can't be real. The 3D model you see, it's from a video. Faster, 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 faster. We're going, we're going. Faster, faster. Right. We just found out that Luma AI enabled video to photogrammetry now, which means instead of taking photos to capture an object in 3D space, you can now take a video. And it's sundown. So we only have about a couple of minutes before it turns dark. That's why we're fucking running right now to get that fucking video and show you guys how good or bad is the Luma in my video grammetry. Come on, come on, hurry up. Let's Run, you got it, you got it. Let's go, let's go. So we are trying this payphone over here. This is three loops, different heights. So Chest middle, high, low, mid, and high. high. Going the second round. Now the high angle. He's going for round three. I don't know what to call this position, but yeah, he's in that position. So okay. as the backup, we're gonna... All right, so we just, we just finished up with autopay, and now we're gonna do this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I need that for all of my AR filters. So there you go, this should be easy. Yeah. So instead of taking photos, we're not just taking a video. Simple. So back home, I opened up Luma AI's website and began uploading the clips one by one. For some reason, the DSLR footages were failing, so I ran them through DaVinci with H.265 encoding and re-uploaded them. Each 3D mesh took about 20 to 30 minutes to be done. Starting with the VLC cone that looks fucking incredible. The AI automatically separates the scene from the object, and in this case, it's done marvelously. I downloaded a GLTF model, but there's also an Unreal Engine plugin, which I want us to cover in another video later. In Blender, I used the Smooth tool to remove the sharp edges, and here is the video we fed to Luma AI versus the 3D model that it spat out. Get this, I only spent a minute and 42 seconds to record that footage, and now I have this cone to play with in any scenario that I like. And this is only the beginning of this technology and so I imagine the quality is only going to get better and better. Let's move on. Checking out the payphone. This was a result from the iPhone and this was a result from the Sony DSLR. Of course the windows are reflective so they're messed up. I just did some cleaning afterwards within Blender. For comparison's sake, I also put them side by side and as you can notice, the DSLR has sharper quality not just because of the image quality of the camera, but also because I did get up close to the autopay. Whereas for the iPhone footage, I followed the instruction on the website and just did the three levels of loop from high, mid, and low angle. Finally, the car. Honestly, we had zero expectations here, considering it was a limo and was super long, so the whole car wasn't even visible in the whole footage. On top of that, the car had a reflective paint, which is a big no-no. Let's not even mention how dark it was outside. Nonetheless, that was a pretty impressive result for the car if you're just using it in the background. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is use these assets to create a very, very, very quick and short video to see how these assets perform if you're using them in the 3D software for background purposes. So stay tuned, we'll see you guys tomorrow.